welcome back to my channel. I have Cassidy here, who I'm very, very excited to get to chat with and um, hear about her story. So I will let you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Cassidy. I'm 26 years old. I'm from Mississippi. I was diagnosed with Turner syndrome when I was at nine days old. And I was also diagnosed with a mild form of autism called Asperger's syndrome at around 17. So yeah, that's pretty much about me. <laughs> so but, yeah. I, I am super interested to hear more about your story because I feel like it's such a unique experience having those dual diagnoses to kind of navigate. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, one, I am curious, are you classic or mosaic? I'm classic. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what were the red flags that made the doctors kind of look further and end up having you diagnosed with Turner's? What did they notice? Uh, yes. Um, at nine days old, when I was diagnosed, I had coarctation of the, my aorta and I had that repaired and they just did a karyotype and it confirmed I had classic TS. So yeah, pretty much how that happened, how I got diagnosed. Wow, so you had the heart surgery at nine days old? Yes. Wow, that is intense. So do you see a cardiologist regularly now ever since? Yeah, yeah, every five years uh -huh, that they recommend. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not, that's actually not too bad for having it so young. Um, yeah. Are there any lasting effects so far? No. Uh, That's great. I haven't had heart issues ever since. You know, everything's been fine ever since. So, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So, how were you diagnosed with Asperger's? Uh, I went to a psychiatrist and um, he just diagnosed me. He said I had Asperger's, and so, yeah, that's how I got diagnosed. My mom kind of knew uh, that I had some form of autism, that it was Asperger's, because she did some research, and she was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, and then we went to a psychiatrist, and he confirmed that I had Asperger's, so, yeah. Do you remember... I do you remember what kind of tests they did to diagnose you? Uh, no. No? Okay. So, I know you have been sharing about having Turner Syndrome and having Asperger's. Is it just your podcast or are there other ways you've been sharing too? Uh, yeah, I have a page called Cassidy's Turner Syndrome and Asperger's Syndrome page on Facebook. Okay. And I share some stuff on there. So, yeah, that and the podcast, which is awesome. So, uh, I hope you're going to it out after this episode is aired. <laughs> yeah, I will link both your Facebook page and your podcast down below. Um, yeah. That's so fun and exciting. I love podcasts, so I love to find new ones to listen to. <laughs> yeah. So as far as navigating, having both diagnoses to deal with, have you found one having a greater impact on your everyday life over the other? Yes, I think Asperger's has had a bigger impact than Turner's. Um, just because there's a lot of, uh, just, yeah, it's a lot more. So, yeah, I think it's had a greater impact than Turner's. So yeah. what would you say is your biggest struggle with both? So what would be your biggest struggle for Turner's? And then what would be your biggest struggle with Asperger's? Well, uh, with Turner's, uh, luckily I haven't had 
uh, many struggles. I, other than being short, um, and I'm around 4'10", 4'11", and uh, I did take growth hormone shots from since I was three up until I was 17. Okay. And so, yeah, I, I did that, and I'm still 4'10", around 4'10", 4'11". And uh, with Asperger's and Turner's, I have visual spatial awareness issues, so I don't drive. That's my biggest issue. And um, also with Asperger's, when I was in school, like socially, like um, in my early years, I wasn't very social, but now I've gotten better at that. I'm way more social now. Uh, so, yeah, that's good. Um, so, yeah, those are some of the major struggles with both. I think the social aspect is something that's interesting because you're kind of experiencing two different sides of it. You have the social impact from Asperger's and the nonverbal learning disorder part of Turner's. I think we all experience that to some level. Yeah. Um, have you found that the more you kind of let yourself be a little more social that helps or are you still pretty anxious yeah I, I can get a bit anxious sometimes but yeah it helps a little you know to be more comfortable being social so yeah it helps a little but I still get anxious every now and then <laughs> has but, connecting yeah. with others through the stuff you do online helped as far as like those that also have either Turner's or Asperger's or maybe both? Has that helped? Oh, a lot. It helps a lot. Yeah. To know I'm not alone, it really helps. So, yeah. Do you know at all what the statistic for um, that dual diagnosis is? Like how common it is? Uh, I do not, um, but I do know it's common for uh, individuals with women and girls, girls and women with Turner syndrome to have nonverbal learning disability that you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that's common and nonverbal learning disability or NLVD uh, is, um, it's common and it's, it has some similarities to autism, but there's some differences as well. So, yeah. If you could describe Asperger's to somebody watching, how, how do you describe it? How would you describe it? It's a form of autism, it's a neurological disorder that, um, it's kind of hard to describe, but it's neurological and, you know, there's some behaviors and stuff that goes along with it. So, yeah, but it is, it's kind of hard to describe, but it is a form of autism. Um, and so, yeah, pretty much. Are there any resources for the Asperger side of things that you found most helpful? Is there a doctor you see? Yeah, I see a psychiatrist um, and stuff like that. So a therapist actually. Um, and some resources I found is www.aane.org. And I also found autismgrownup.com, which is an online community. It's a free online community uh, for autistic adults, uh, parents, siblings, family members, grandparents, professionals, anybody who has an interest in helping autistic individuals transition into adulthood or to help them navigate adulthood. And I'm actually the online community manager of that is founded by Dr. Tara Regan, uh, who has two adult brothers on the autism spectrum. So 
yeah, she's great. And I'm also with Turner Syndrome, the Turner Syndrome side of things, I'm also the Twitter chat facilitator at the Turner Syndrome Foundation. Oh, wow. And, Very cool. Yeah. And so I like to help the Turner Syndrome community and the autism community in any way I can. Um, so, yeah. And also, um, I am locally in Northeast Mississippi, where I'm from. Uh, I am the community navigator of the ARC of Northeast Mississippi Autism Now Division. And so, yeah, I'm doing a lot for the community and uh, I hope to keep doing it because it's so important to be an advocate for TS and autism. And so, yeah, I think it's really important. It is super important. That's so awesome. I, yeah, I am so excited that you're sharing about your experience having both. Um, I think it's something that does not get talked about a ton. And yeah. I, I think it's such an important way to get resources to people. So how long have you been involved in helping with those things? When did you start doing that? Uh, well, I've been with Autism Grown Up since February, and uh, then with the Turner Syndrome Foundation, I think it's been since March, and with the Arc of Northeast Mississippi, it's been, like, since this month, like, yeah, this month, so, yeah, it's yeah. been, yeah, it's been a crazy ride, but, you know, helping in any way I can, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah. are there any other health complications that you've come across with Turner's? Um, you know, there's that whole long list of possibilities besides yeah. the heart defect and growth hormones. Um, has there been anything else that you've kind of had to deal with? Well, I take medicine for hypothyroidism. And I have horseshoe kidney. Um, so, yeah, pretty much. So how does horseshoe kidney change your care? So is there, is there anything that doctors do to manage any impact of that? Or is it kind of just monitoring it? Just monitoring. Okay. Because I know... I have had, I think they did one ultrasound so far to make sure. Yeah. And um, I, I had always kind of wondered what that would look like if they had found something. So yeah. are, they just, are they just looking for if it changes at all or gets worse? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just monitoring it. And um, yeah, I haven't had any issues with it so far. So that's good. Um, so, yeah, it hasn't been giving me any problems. So, hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So, yeah. have you um, been seeing an endocrinologist regularly? Yes. Um, every once a year. Um, and he's awesome and really knowledgeable about TS. And he's so understanding. So, yeah. I see him once a year. He's a great endocrinologist. So, yeah. That's great. <laughs> so, yeah. I always talk about Turner syndrome as a spectrum because I feel like yeah. that's kind of the best picture that I can think of to explain how diverse everything is. And I know you mentioned autism has always. I think been referred to as a spectrum just because it does vary. Yeah. You, do you agree with that picture? Do you think since you have experienced both, do you feel like that is an accurate connection? Yes. Yes, definitely. How have you found with Asperger's the mm -hmm. varying degrees on the spectrum has impacted 
care, do you think it, it has not impacted it? Do you feel like it's still pretty easy to get care? Like, um, for example, your specific case being looked at, is it, um, is it pretty common for doctors to know how to adapt to that? Uh, well, that's your question. Um, here in North Mississippi, Northeast Mississippi, there's not a lot of resources for adults on the spectrum. So it's very difficult to find care and resources for adults. Um, like there's zero resources here. And so it's very uh, frustrating um, with that. So yeah, it's very hard. Is there a significant difference in care between a child on the spectrum and an adult? Yes, definitely. I am curious what you would see between both of those, like grouping all of those struggles that come from both together. What would you say has been your biggest struggle out of that? Mostly just um, like my executive functioning is the main thing um, that I struggle with. So, main thing. <laughs> so, um, I have been asking everybody because the theme for Awareness Month this year was Be Uniquely You. So, I have had a lot of fun hearing everybody um, kind of describe their take on it. I would love to hear what that means to you. Yes, uh, for me, it means just being yourself and not letting anybody tell you what to be and who to be. Um, so, yeah, just being yourself and is what it means to me. So, Well, thank you so much for talking to me. Um, was there anything you would want to share with everybody watching that we haven't already talked about? Uh, not at the moment. Uh, just reach me at Cassidy Hooper on Facebook and uh, listen to my podcast. Uh, Brooke is going to uh, provide the links in the description of this video. And uh, yeah, and my page, Cassidy's Turner Syndrome, and Asperger's Syndrome page, and I hope to see you there. But it was so nice talking to you, Brooke. I really enjoyed it. Thank yeah. you for having me. Thank you so much, Cassidy, for talking to me. And I will make sure all of the links are down below. And um, I also look forward to talking to you on your podcast, and we will make sure that everybody gets that link when it is ready. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.